Come on, can I talk to you? How are you? Fine, sir. I hope if I talk to you, you will not be annoying. No, sir. You are here for deliverance. Yes, sir. Because you are a drunkard. Yes, sir. As beautiful as you are, each time you finish and people see you drunk, they yes, always sir. pity you. Yes, sir. There was a time you are half naked. Yes, sir. They have to pull you from the gutter. Yes, sir. There was a time they abuse you when you, you take this. Yes, sir. He doesn't know that they abuse her. It was when he wake up, he saw spam in her body. Almost five people abuse her. It's a case. Man of God, what he said is true. My only problem that I have is that when I drink, I always beat up my children. And eh? I'm when, always... you, when you drink, you always beat up your children? My children, yes, sir. And all the money that I always have, I will spend it all. Sometimes I will drink for one week, non-stop. I won't eat anything. Every day, I can smoke like four packets of, for, of cigarettes every day. Sometimes when I finish doing it, I will start regretting. I don't even know what gets me into that. It's either I'm too happy, I start, or I'm too sad. And lately, I've always wanted to commit suicide for no reason. Look here! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are free. You rise up, what shall we say unto um, the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall we say unto um, the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank The Lord, children of God, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Sandra Shaw, and this man is my husband and my two boys, my children. I want to thank God for my life and my family. Sunday was my first time I have been to synagogue. I've never seen prophet before in my life. And when he was giving prophecy, he came to my seat and called me out and he said to me, you are a drunkard. And I was shocked. I was, I was embarrassed, but something in me just said, you know why you came. I've been places that they have never ever told me I'm a drunkard before. They have always said, you have a spiritual husband and Never, nobody have ever told me my problem, but me myself know my problem. So when the man of God said that, I said, thank you, Lord, in my heart that this is my final bus stop. And I said, yes, sir. He now said, I hope you will not be offended if I tell you your problem. I said, with all due respect, sir, please say it. Because no, everybody around the world, anybody, even people that is watching me know that the only problem I have is that I drink. So I'm not ashamed to say that I drink because I know that I've been praying for deliverance. Come on, can I talk to you? How are you? Thanks, sir. I hope if I talk to you, you will not be annoying. No, sir. You are here for deliverance. Yes, sir. Because you are a drunkard. Yes, sir. So, man of God said, even you have drunk and seen yourself in the gota and you, you, you have been abused, you didn't know. There was a time they abused you when you, you take this. Yes, sir. He doesn't know that they abused her. It was when he woke up, he saw spam in her body. Almost five people abused her. It's a case. In my heart, I say yes, and in my heart, I know that worse things like that have happened. 
I've drank and cooked poison to feed my kids. The only thing that saved my kids was that day a friend of mine took them out and refused to, re um, to release them to me. And I abused her. I was turning her gate, was shaking her house. I said I would cause alarm. She wouldn't release them because if she had released them, they could have ate that poison and they could have died. Especially my first son. If I drink, I just hate him for no reason. I will beat him for like three days, enjoy him. I will carry knife, bottle, even my husband. I get sad. It all started after I had my second son, Daniel, 12 years ago. Out of a sudden, after like three weeks, I had my child. My husband bought me a new car and I had a party. After that party, that same day I had the party, the next day I had a dream. And in that dream, I was naked, wandering around the street, mad, mad. And I woke up, I didn't understand the dream, and then I was not a Christian, I don't go to church. So I didn't take it as anything, I didn't even share the dream with anybody. I noticed that from the next day, I started bleeding. For one year, I saw my period nonstop. I went to the clinic and they told me that it might be baby blues that is happening to me. Each day I get sad. I, I, I drink that if you, if you come to my house, eight part of my house wardrobe, nobody knew that I, I was drinking secretly. In a day I could consume like seven to eight packets of rot mass. And each time I, I smoke and drink, something would tell me, just enter your car, drive out. I would drive out, I would drive, I don't know where I'm going, I don't even remember driving. Sometimes midnight, two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, I will be driving. Sometimes I will wake up in the morning around 10, I will see myself in the steering, unknown destination. Sometimes I will drive to the sea, to just enter the sea, but once I, I even in Ghana, I drove to, close to the sea and my car engine just ceased, it couldn't start. And people just gathered. Does it mean when you are driving, you park in the midnight and sleep inside a vehicle? I don't even know that I'm driving. I don't know how the car will stop. I don't know where I am. And you will sleep inside it there? Yes, sir. Who will now come and wake you up inside the vehicle? By the time people will wake me, they must have stolen my phones, my bag. They must have robbed everything in the car before I could woke up. Then 2009... I had a fatal accident. Under six years, I've had eight fatal accidents that nearly took my life, but nothing happened to me. The airbag shot at me. That eight fatal accident, my car went beyond repair. The airbag all shot, but nothing happened to me. But 2009, I had a very fatal accident. That was why I went to live in Ghana, in Port Harcourt. That accident, the guy that was involved, I hit. They had to uh, appetite his leg. And he was, I, 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 then my, me and my husband have already started having problems concerning the drinking. He wasn't happy with the marriage anymore and everything. And the family of the guy, they had to fly him out and I needed to pay money. I had to sell my, my land property to be able to, almost hundred and something thousand dollars, to be able to send the guy to the state for them to give him medical treatment. And sometimes when I drink, I always fight him. I always like, sometimes I would just pick up a phone and call his employee and started threatening them that they should sack him. If they don't sack him, I will kill them. I will start threatening them that I'm destroying the company house that they have given us. I will fight all the workers. Then the next day they will call him, they will say, Mr. Shaw, we are happy with your working, but we cannot take this. Our company is well respected. We are sorry that we cannot employ you anymore. We are sorry. If you, if you, are, if you want to work with us, then we will have to transfer you to a, a place where you will get far from this woman. But as long as you are married to this woman, you won't work with us. And they will sack him. For like every month, he, he is always losing his job because of me, then he will still be with me, he will not. He has lost all his friends that he, he knew since he came to this country 20, 35 years ago, he came to this country. Nobody talks to him. Nobody sits with him because he's still married with me. They said, I don't know why, why you're still with this lady that always disgraces you. Each morning he works every month. 
There was a time he's earning like 30 something thousand dollars. He gives it to me. I can't account for it. Every money he has worked for the past 15 years we have married, I always spend it not knowing what I use it in doing because of the alcohol. Till last Sunday, when the man of God <laughs> called me out and told me my problem, since over 15 years I've been looking for solution. I got tired of looking for solution and I told God when I came on Sunday when I was praying, I told God that I don't want to enter 2014 with this disease or I will kill myself. And I was praying. I fasted before I came. I said, God, this is my last bus stop and I thank God for answering my prayer because I didn't know that I would survive this year. I didn't want to enter the next day with this shame. I told my God because everywhere I go, nobody wants to have anything to do with me. Nobody wants to sit with me. To everybody that I'm supposed to, that's supposed to respect me, disrespect me because I'm an alcoholic. And I don't find joy in doing it. Sometimes I regret. I'm losing my children's respect because of my character. I thank God. And after deliverance for the past one week now, I've been in the presence of the Lord. I've never felt that pain in my heart. And I've never had the odds to drink or smoke. I bless God. I bless God. <laughs> you listen to that. Let's just hear that part again. See, after that deliverance, the urge to smoke, to drink. Tell us. Because you have every morning, in, in a week, I noticed that in a week... The church I attend in Ghana, they do program on Tuesdays and Fridays and church program on Sunday. So I noticed that on Monday, or on, on Monday I will drink so that Tuesday I can't go to church. Then I will drink Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday I will not drink. Early morning, 3 to 2 o'clock, on Thursday morning, something will talk to me. Have a cigarette. Have a drink. From one drink, it's as if something will just step out of me and something else will enter. I will drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday I can't go to church. It always happens. And in a, in a week, I will have three crises. And I might wake up too happy. Then I start drinking. I'll start playing music. Or I might wake up too sad. The pain will be so much. Nothing anybody will do to please me. And the only people I want to hang around it is people that still drink. As long as you meant well for me, I don't want to be around you. But since Sunday deliverance, I dreamt in the night on Sunday night where I saw a man of God. The cloth man of God using seeing me on Monday night was the cloth he was wearing on Sunday night when I dreamt. So I was climbing a step. As I was climbing the step, man of God was coming out. You know, I said, my daughter, keep climbing. Don't look back. Just keep going. Don't look back. Just go. And as I... So I, I woke up from that dream. Then I'm still in the camp here. And I said, go, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Because I've always heard that when man of God prophesies to you that there's a solution to your problem, and when you see him in the dream, indeed you are healed. And I just said to myself, I even told the people that are around me, I said, I know that I'm healed. I feel free. So since that Monday, the pain, I'm scared I, to, to like go home or to like wake up in the morning before that every time that is about to be morning, I'm scared because I know that that pain comes with full force. But for now, since Monday, I've not received any pain in my heart or the urge to drink. I, if each time I think of drinking or think of smoking, it disgusts me. So what message do you have for the whole world? Emmanuel. You are all over the world. I want you guys to know that there is God. In any situation you are passing through, in anything you are passing through, just believe in God. Let no human being tell you, I will take you here. I will go out there, this place. I went to places. They said that if you drink the roots, that 
Once you drink it, when you see alcohol, it will, you will throw up and everything. But to my greatest surprise, when I go to such places, my problem becomes worse than when it, how it was. I want you to know that God is God. And he will be the only one that will save you. And whoever that is having problems that I'm having, I know that I don't believe that anybody can face what I've faced for the past 12 years. I want you to pick up courage to come down here because God is here. I didn't believe that God is here. When people say go to TB Joshua, I will tell them, please don't even talk that. Because I don't want where I will go, they will cast one and put hundred. But when I came, since 12 years I've been looking for solution. This is the first man of God that have told me my problem and hit it where it's happening. And I bless God for his life and his family. Thank you, Jesus. I want you not to give up. Pick up courage. I know when I was coming, the devil was telling me, if you go, you will die. I faced, I faced challenge. Even when I came that Sunday, I was sitting down. The thing was telling me, leave this place. But I told God that this is my final bus stop, that I will not enter this disease next day. It's a decision I make. So no matter what the devil is telling you that he will kill you and anything, don't mind the devil. He's only fighting to be able to put you in bondage. Pick up courage and come. Even though you cannot afford to come, there are so many people that can assist you. If you want, I can assist you because if you look at me, you know that money is not my problem. The, to have money and be humiliated is the worst thing that can happen to you. There was a time I prayed to God, let me be poor, but let me have my peace. Right now, I have my peace, I have my joy, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I thank God oh, for my life. But I like that language. I want you to repeat that one again. That is, money is not a problem. He said there is everything. Tell those who believe so much in money. Much money, money. They believe so much in money. He said there was a time he was praying that money should go. And he want to have peace. Please start from the issue of money. Tell us. Because when my people hear money, they laugh. But when they hear other things, they clap. You see? Nobody clap when they hear money. <laughs> Emmanuel, children of God, I want you to know that money is not the problem. Because if you look at me, you will know that I have it all. But I didn't have my peace. It got to a point I told God to make me poor, but let me have my peace. And now I can sleep, I can eat, I have my joy, I have my peace. And I thank God for his mercy. Thank you, Jesus. By what you are saying now, show that in the past you really want to get out of the mess. You want to get out of the problem. It was like you don't like that lie, but you don't know. You did not know how to get out of it. Tell us about that. Yeah, man of God, for the past... Let me say, eight years now, I've been living on my own. I, I'm not separated with my husband or divorced, but I chose to live on my own because I didn't want to cause him any pain or make him lose his job. Ever since I moved to Ghana, he has kept a steady job aside that when he was sick. And I had to bring my children to come and school in Nigeria when I'm, I'm in Ghana so that they can be in body school. And after, like, weekend, they come home to be with their dad. Because I'm the, I see myself, I'm the problem. The whole place is happy. Whenever I come in, everybody is scared. My first son doesn't even eat. He doesn't have appetite in eating because once he just sees me. It's not that he doesn't love me because he's scared. He knows that every two, two days, I will have crisis. And when I have crisis, him and his father is mostly people that suffered when I have crisis. So... It has so much affected me in my marriage. I can't even do any business. It's any money I put in any business will crumble. I can drink under one week. I can spend ten to $20,000. My name is Jared Shaw. Sandra is my wife and my two children. Over the last five years has been hell. It's been absolute hell because of the way Sandra's behaved. With the drinking over the last five years, the more she drinks, the angrier she gets until she gets extremely violent. And the more violent she gets, the more she turns to the children. It's not, it's not even 
10 weeks ago that she was visiting. And the people, I was in Abu Dhabi, and the people had to come to the house to rescue the children and take them somewhere else and hide them because of her temper. And she was ripping the TVs off the walls, the flat screen TVs off the whole of the house, smashing the TVs on the ground, just in temper with, with alcohol. And this has been the same course for the last five years. Before that, she had problems with alcohol, but she was manageable. And, but in the last five years, she's just turned absolutely crazy with alcohol. So the difference I see in her this week is much, much different. This morning when she woke up, she was happy, she was friendly. She wasn't like before, snapping at the kids, shouting at everybody. This morning when she got up, she was happy. She ran around, got the kids dressed, bathed them, made sure everybody was okay. The kids are terrified of her. If you see these children, they're terrified of her. As soon as she drinks, they'll run away and hide. When she's sober, no problem at all. They'll love it a bit. But as soon as she has a drink, it's a major, major problem. So I've seen a massive, massive difference today. And she's happy. She's expressing herself. She's talking. She's happy with the kids. She came downstairs, had breakfast, which she would never, ever do before. She would never, ever. But now she's doing it. So thank God. Wow, well, you listen to that. I think if the Lord will anoint a minister of God, especially for this issue, because there are many people that are in account for reformation. Many homes, children of the richest hero, presidents, many of their children, they are in the account because of this addicted. If I'm talking, let us see how all over the world, all over the world, there's no solution. We pray God should anoint the ministers of God that can rescue these people all over the world, deliver them just like this, our sister has been delivered. We want to say happy marriage once again, and uh, I want to once again salute our father who just talking now. 90% look, listen, 90% of men cannot bear what he has beared. If I may say 99%. Listen, I used to say to people that as a minister of God, issue of racism is not a color. It's not an issue of color. They say, ah, this person is racist, this one is racist, this one is blind, this one is white. No, it's not color. It's spirit. Can you see what has happened between this husband and wife? It was not beer all those things because the woman is a black or white, but he bore it because he has good heart. In the world, they, they will talk of Ah, this is this. Day. It's no issue of color. It is no issue of color. It is evil spirit in, in a man, in a woman. And I'm very sure if we were to be even a black man that married our sister here, he would not stand the pain. If I'm talking, let me see your hand. He would not stand the pain. But here, a brother here now. That is not in Africa, it stood the pain. He saw her pain as, as his own pain. Imagine if our father here left the marriage a long time, this woman would have died. The woman is alive because the man is with her. That is the solution. We are talking today because this man is still in the marriage. If this man has divorced a long time, we will not be talking today. But he needs companion like this to still stay alive here today. So tear the whole world, please stretch your hand. The issue of racism is not color. It's not color. It's issue of evil spirit. It's not color. 
It's not white, it's not black, it's not green. Thank you very much. Es asunto del espíritu. Rise up. Majesty. Worship is majesty. Unto Jesus be your glory. Worship you, Lord, Majesty, Kingdom authority, Kingdom authority. Flow from His throne, flow from His throne, unto His own. He's at the been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.